using the method of annihilators, final solutions to the linear ODE, y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y equals bx, where bx is one of the following three functions. Now, normally, we'd solve this equation using variation of constants. So, what we do there? I let bx be equal to zero, we get the general solution of the homogeneous equation. We're gonna take that, mix it with bx, and then we integrate. That gets us to our particular solution. If we can use the annihilator method, then we can go straight to our particular solution with no integration. Only catch, the annihilator method only works in special cases. So we need two conditions. First, if we let bx be equal to zero, we want to have a linear ODE with constant coefficients. So that means, okay, the linear part just says you could take as many derivatives of y as you like, but you're not allowed to square, cube, or anything else like that. So only derivatives. Then constant coefficient says, okay, out in front, there are no functions of x. We have only numbers. Second condition for our bx, we want that to be the solution of a linear ODE with constant coefficients also. If we have both of those conditions, we can use the annihilator method and then we proceed. So first step, we're gonna take bx, set it equal to zero, find the general solution for the homogeneous equation. So we'll take that and then we'll just set it aside. Then I wanna compare characteristic polynomials. So, for the left-hand side, if I let bx be equal to zero, it's gonna be a linear ODE with constant coefficients. Out's gonna come characteristic polynomial. On the right-hand side, okay, bx is a solution of a linear ODE with constant coefficients, so we get a characteristic polynomial there also. We compare factors. There are no common factors. Our particular solution is gonna come from the linear ODE constant coefficients on the right-hand side. So it'll be one of the general solutions there. If we have a common factor, then we just have to alter the equation on the right by increasing some multiplicities. So we'll see how to do that in a special case. Now, once we have a candidate for a particular solution, we just apply the equation on the left-hand side and then set it equal to bx. Then you'll be solving for coefficients and that gets you to your answer. Now, let's consider the case where bx equals e to the 2x. Here, what are we gonna do? Our first step, we're gonna find the homogeneous part of our general solution. So we'll let the right-hand side be equal to zero. Get our characteristic polynomial. The roots are gonna be three and minus one. So our homogeneous part is gonna be a e to the 3x plus b e to the minus x. Now, to get the particular part, what are we gonna do? I take a look at the characteristic polynomial that goes with e to the 2x. So, this is gonna be a solution of y prime minus 2y equals zero. So its characteristic polynomial is gonna be r minus two. There are no common roots here, so, our particular solution is gonna be the form. Okay, so we take all possible solutions of this equation. So it's just gonna be a constant times e to the two x. Now I wanna solve for that constant. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take our equation, we're gonna put our particular part in, and we expect to get out e to the two x. So we get y prime, two c e to the two x, y double prime, four c e to the two x, stick it into the equation. So out's gonna come, minus three C equals one. So we'll be able to get rid of the E of the two X by just letting X be equal to zero. So I have C equals minus one third. So for our general solution, we're gonna have homogeneous part right here. Then we put on our particular solution. So when we check, okay, I'm only gonna check the particular part because we know if I apply this part here, to the homogeneous part, zero is gonna come out. So what's gonna happen? If I apply y double prime to this term here, we're gonna get two to come down and then two comes down again. So I have a minus four thirds e to the two x. 
We're going to do one derivative. We'll have a minus 2 thirds. We're going to multiply by a minus 2 from the equation. So I'm going to get a 4 thirds e to the 2x. And then if I take this term, multiply by minus 3, we just get e to the 2x. I add everything together. Out comes e to the 2x. And that checks our particular solution. Now, let's consider bx equal to e to the 3x. We have our linear ODE. Then you'll note the left-hand side's unchanged. So the homogeneous part of our general solution we could take directly from part A. So it'll be A e to the 3x plus B e to the minus x. Now, I need a particular solution. So if I try to do what we did in part A, so I'm going to take e to the 3x and just take it times a constant, what's going to happen? You'll note e to the 3x is part of solution of the homogeneous equation. So if I apply the left-hand side to this term here, we're always going to get 0. So that means no matter what I choose for c, there's no way I can get e to the 3x to come out on our right-hand side. So we take a step back, take a look at the characteristic polynomials. On the left-hand side, we're getting r minus 3, r plus 1. On the right-hand side, we have e to the 3x. That's a solution of y prime minus 3y equals 0. So there are the characteristic polynomials r minus 3. And we note that we have a common factor. So the way that we fix this, we just add the exponents. So if I had a characteristic polynomial r minus 3 squared, then the solutions are going to be of the form cx e to the 3x plus d e to the 3x. So you would take x to a power. In this case, it's going to be 1 less than your exponent. So here it's just x to the 1. And then all lower powers of x. Now you'll note in this case, I could throw away our second term because that's just going to show up as part of the homogeneous part. So I only need to consider our particular solution of the form c times x e to the 3x. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to take this particular solution, put it into our equation, see that we get e to the 3x out and solve for c. So we take y prime, y double prime, go to our equation. What's nice about this, the x e to the 3x term is going to disappear when this collapses. So we're just going to be left with 4c e to the 3x equals e to the 3x. You let x be equal to 0, that gives you c equal to 1 fourth. So our solution is going to be, we have our homogeneous part here, and then our particular part is plus 1 fourth x e to the 3x. Of course, you check your work, but that's just going to be redoing the calculation we did right here. Now, for part c, we'll have b of x equals e to the 3x plus e to the minus x. So not much is going to change. For the homogeneous part of our general solution, we have the same one we had in parts a and b, a e to the 3x plus b e to the minus x. Take a look at characteristic polynomials. So the first one will be unchanged, r minus 3r plus 1. If we take a look at our bx, in this case, we're also going to have r minus 3 coming from this term. r plus 1 comes from this term. So that's going to mean we're going to have to add exponents on both. So we're going to have an x e to the 3x and an x e to the minus x in our particular solution. Then proceed as before. Find your first derivative, your second derivative, put them into your equation, and then set whatever comes out equal to e to the 3x plus e to the minus x. Now, what's nice about this is all the x e to the 3x and the x e to the minus x terms take care of themselves. They just disappear from your final equation. So all you have to deal with now is 4c e to the 3x minus 4d e to the minus x equals, and then what we want to come out is e to the 3x plus e to the minus x. Two ways to get to your answer. One, just match up the like exponential functions. So if I just take a look at the e to the 3x terms, we'll have 4c equals 1, or c is a fourth. If I match up the e to the minus x terms, 
we'll have minus 4d equals 1, or d equals minus 1 fourth. Now, if that feels fast and loose, what we can do instead is just put in special values of x and get some equations to come out. So if I put in x equals 0, we get 4c minus 4d equals 2. Then you have to kind of think about things. So if I want to get rid of the e's, I want to put something in there to a natural log, but I don't want it to be complicated. So I'll do natural log of 2. So if I put in natural log of 2, what's going to happen? Well, that's going to turn this term here into an 8, so I'll be 2 cubed. And then here I'm going to get 2 to the minus 1, which gives me a 1 half. So I get 32c minus 2d. Then the other side I get an 8 plus a half. So I have two equations and two unknowns, so we can solve that. When you solve, you're just going to get our c and d from before. So our general solution, take our homogeneous part, and then we add it to 1 fourth x e to the 3x minus 1 fourth x e to the minus x, and that's our answer. Of course, we check that, but that's just working things out through here as before. Let's get an idea of why the annihilator method works. So let's consider case A. So we have our equation. Okay, our bx in this case was e to the 2x. So I want to consider bx in two different ways. bx is equal to e to the 2x, so it's going to satisfy this equation b prime minus 2b equals 0. On the other hand, b is also equal to our expression in terms of derivatives of y. So I want to take this expression, stick it into this equation here. What's going to happen? Well, when you work it out, on one side you're going to get 0. On the other side, we're going to have a linear ODE with constant coefficients of 1 degree higher. Now note, we've just traded in this equation for another equation, but this equation is homogeneous. So we know how to get all the solutions of that equation. Okay, even better, all the solutions of this equation are going to be solutions of this equation. So when I narrow these down, I've automatically narrowed all of these down also. Now, one other thing we have, the characteristic polynomial of our new equation is just going to be given by taking the characteristic polynomials on each side, multiply them together. Okay, so we're going from here equal to this, multiplying together, and then all of our solutions on this side are of this form here. Okay, then we note the homogeneous part looks like this coming from here, and our particular part looks like this. So this is just a matter of just separating out what's happening on each side here. Now the way you can think of this is, what I've done is I have this equation here written in terms of operator notation. Okay, this is going to be equal to e to the 2x. So the idea is I'm going to look for okay, some polynomial that annihilates e to the 2x. So that's where annihilator comes from. I'm trying to find polynomial in terms of d dx that kills e to the 2x, or sends it to 0. So once I have this, I'm going to apply this to both sides. So that's going to turn this equation here into a homogeneous equation over here. So that's how our method works. Now, this business of having multiplicities, well, that's just making sure you're taking care of what's happening when there's one in each part here. So when you go to your homogeneous solution, if you have multiplicities here, then you're going to have to notch up with powers of x.